Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan. This is the fifth tutorial on creating a Sudoku solver in Java using NetBeans. Uh, I left last tutorial with a slight error um, which I've actually corrected already. Um, I noticed it just within seconds of uh, closing out of the last video um, and luckily it was the only error. Before we had and and if this and this and what we should have said was or if either of these are not uh, uh, true then uh, keep going around um, and so that is uh, that was the error and now you'll see if we we change that and if we run it you'll now notice that this has become a zero. There are not two one or two ones or twos or whatever it was in this uh, three by three corner here um, and so on. I haven't checked every spot, but it just, it looks about right. Every time I scan my eye over stuff, it just seems to line up. Um, and uh, now what I'd like to do is uh, just do a couple fun items now that we've kind of solved it. Um, there are some limitations right now. For instance, uh, if the user had put in a, let's say a 2 there, um, if you were to run this, I believe, you will not end up with a 2 there. You'll end up with a 3, um, and so on. It doesn't quite know how to handle what the user gives besides a 0. And so, uh, that's, uh, there's a few just little things that uh, could be tweaked and stuff, and I might provide provide some uh, tutorials on that, but uh, you can also experiment at your own leisure. This time I would like to uh, create a timer. This will be using uh, some new functions here, and just to see how long does it take to solve a Sudoku in milliseconds. So the way we'll start here is uh, this is really our solving item. I'm not going to time the whole uh, pre-setup stuff. I just want to time this uh, loop thing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a time, uh, uh, let's do a integer, but it won't be an integer this time. Now it'll be a double. And we'll do a time start. And we'll say time start is equal to, and again, system. But instead of dot out, uh, we're not looking for an input. Uh, I believe it would be yes. Current time mills. Uh, just put in a C and I believe that was all it took. C, control space, and then you get. Uh, if you did a CU and control space, it would just type it in because there's only one result. So now we have uh, created this double, which means pretty much every number, such as one third and so on. It's not to infinite decimal places, and it does have a bit of an error. You'll find. Uh, uh, it has rounding errors and stuff, but uh, it is nonetheless a much more accurate number than a integer. Um, for instance, probably if you did a, a double as a 1 divided by 3, and then you multiply that 3 by 3, uh, you probably wouldn't return at 1. It would probably be a... Uh, it would probably be a 0.99999 sort of situation. And it's just, just a bit of a rounding error. Um, but once we are finished uh, this print loop, we'll, let's just copy this first line. We'll create a double, and this time we'll name it, uh, it doesn't like it because it's the same name, time end. All right, and then we will do uh, system.out.print uh, print line. Um, there is another print, and that's called print, uh, just print, instead of print line. And what print does, uh, we won't be using it now, but it doesn't go to the next line. So if I said print this and then print this, it'll just put it all in one long row. Uh, whereas print line starts on a new line and writes it, starts on a new line and writes it. Sort of thing. So we'll do print line, and then we'll put in quotes, uh, that took put in a space, because we want a space between that and the next, uh, between the milliseconds, and we'll put in brackets, because remember the plus would uh, put it to the end of it, um, in brackets, 
uh, time end, because that's the greater one, minus time start, and then at the end, we'll put in another bracket to uh, complete, period. Let's see what happens when I run this piece of code. Um, all right, it took uh, 85.0. Uh, oh, I should add the word milliseconds here. Uh, uh, I'll just put in mils. Uh, or millies, I guess, to be uh, consistent with uh, um, the current time millies. All right, um, but what you get here is now that it took, this time it took 88 seconds. If you hit run again, 88, 89, 85, 92, 86. Uh, we're getting a bunch of numbers uh, right around uh, that 80, uh, yeah. So we hit 92. Our lowest has been 85. So there's one tweak I want to make just to show you uh, the difference that a little bit of code will make. I haven't even tested the improvement, but I mentioned previously that uh, this validity, there was something not very, uh, um, it was just uh, harder than it needed to be. This whole uh, sorting thing, I'm just going to delete it actually. I know, don't gasp about it. Um, it uh, will uh, replace it with something better. We've strung together, remember, the row, column, and square. And the w thing we want to find out is, are there only three of that whatever digit was at x, y in the grid? And so a quicker way to do that, I think, we'll see if the, uh, um, if the milliseconds uh, agree or if this is a, a too minor detail for the milliseconds to count with. Um, but it's definitely simpler to read and follow. So we will say... Uh, um, I'll just tell you what I'm wanting to do here before I type this out. What I'm wanting to do is take this big string, delete all the, all the digits that are at uh, whatever the XY location is, get rid of them, and check if the length of this new string is three shorter than uh, it used to be. So what we will do is let's, uh, let's first do this replacement thing. Uh, the way you would do that is that we would take temp dot, uh, you guessed it, replace, and we will replace the old one. Uh, you would think to type in, uh, we can do this at the start, I guess, grid x, y, and replace it with uh, a blank uh, quotes, but that will produce an error uh, for a few reasons. Um, so, be, and uh, the first reason is because this grid is an integer. It finds a zero or a one there, and it doesn't find a string. And replacing, we want to be consistent with strings. And so, what we would type in is integer dot to string. We're converting an integer to a string, and we encircle that. Now, there is another error, but when you hover over it, you can see the error. Uh, it says there's incomparable data types. This replace is obviously a string, and how can you check if it's equal to an integer? So what we will do is we're wanting to know length, so we type in dot length. So we've just replaced, found all the occurrences of this, and replaced it with uh, nothing. So we've basically deleted it, and we've found out its length. And now the greater length would be temp dot length. So we put it first to keep a uh, positive value, otherwise you would set this to a negative 3. If you reverse these two on the negatives, you always get the uh, negative answer. And uh, But we'd rather not be too negative on these uh, tutorials. So uh, let's stick this way. Uh, let's see what happens now when I hit run. Alright, 190, uh, 191 so obviously, uh, Java has a way of, uh, um, of replacing this, and we're consistently getting 190-ish milliseconds. And if you uh, recall, I'm just hitting Control-Z a whack of times. Um, 
There. With our old code, when we were running it, we were more at 86 mils. So the system that I have written is quicker than Java looking through and replacing all the instances of three. And so uh, this uh, is one of those rare cases where uh, in this situation I have uh, actually done a, a better job. Not that Java did a bad job. Java's, uh, this is doing something, I'm approaching it differently, for, specific for my situation. But if the other way was easier to understand, I would recommend typing using it instead, just because uh, a, Java, a Sudoku solver is, uh, uh, shouldn't take that long, and so a milliseconds aren't a huge deal. And I mean, 190 milliseconds is still reasonable. Uh, so there you go. This is uh, a working Sudoku solver. It solved the blank Sudoku. Like I showed you, inserting user numbers doesn't yet work, but hey, it's solving Sudokus and the logic is working. So the hard part is over. We have a, um, the skeleton of what we are making and hopefully uh, continue watching my tutorials or if you would like, uh, play on it on your own. Try to figure out your own method of making it so that if I put a one, it will accommodate that and keep that as a one and uh, solve accordingly. All right. Until next time, enjoy Java.